Right. And we appreciate you always, those who are, attend regularly, we just really appreciate your presence. You really do add to the lesson. And um, I don't know about you, I really enjoy Bible study midweek service where we can get together and just go through the Bible in certain lessons. And so tonight, Bible study lesson, we're gonna talk about influencers uh, and what it means to live lives that reflect the image of Christ. And um, it sounds like a simple topic, but there is a lot to be said here in this lesson on tonight. As we live in a world full of influencers, you know, you can spend hours uh, flipping through YouTube, Facebook, social media. You also can turn on the TV and you have all kinds of commercials and actors and actresses on media. You have radio personalities and people who are very popular. And yet we even have influencers in the spiritual realm uh, in the church. We have our favorite TV preacher, evangelists. Uh, we have singers and gospel artists. And these people are influencers. As we talked on Sunday from the lesson of the company you keep, I thought that we should talk a little bit more about the influence we have on the world. And so tonight's lesson is dealing with uh, influencers. And influencers are, again, those people that I listed earlier, but they're also you. You, you are the light of the world. You know, you are the sheep of his pasture, right? And so when we understand who we are, we also have to be reminded that we have an impact on others as well. Uh, and so it's important that we are mindful of that. And so our lesson tonight is coming from uh, a couple of scriptures that just inspired that, which was in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. I want someone to grab that for me. 1 Timothy. I'm going to turn to it myself. 1 Timothy chapter 4, and that's in the New Testament. And I want you guys to kind of talk to me tonight a little bit, if you would. Um, verse 12 says this in chapter 4. It says here, um, don't let anyone despise your youth, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. This is marching orders. These are marching orders that Paul is given to a young disciple named Timothy. And we all know that God, I mean, that, that, that Paul truly did have a love for God, and, but his love for certain people in his life was very unmistakable. He was very intentional. And so he wanted to sow a seed of encouragement to this young man, this young follower, this young believer. And I think there is something we can learn from this because we too should be interested and concerned about the lives of, of the young people, especially those who are young in Christ Jesus, those people who are still new to the way. They're new to, to, to this new walk in Christ Jesus. We all started off as young babes in Christ, right? You know, we made a decision to give our lives to the Lord. And sure, some of us may have grown up in church and we saw how, you know, some of this was done. But when it came to us, you know, trying to make it personal, we didn't know what we were doing a lot of times, you know, and you sometimes you got a little disappointed because it wasn't as easy as you thought it would be, you know, and that can be very discouraging. And so Paul is letting Timothy know, number one, you come from good people. You come from good stock. You come from a good tradition. Your grandmother Eunice and your mom, you know, different ones who's been in your life and I've been in your life. I'm expecting something good from you. And so when we talk about influencers, influencers have to have an agenda as well. Believe it or not, there are some influencers out here on social media, on social media that has an agenda and it's not an honorable one. They really want the likes, they want the, they want the praise, they want the followers. And yet many of them don't follow anybody. They don't, they don't do anything other than 
you know, try to monetize. Um, sometimes, um, you know, different trivial things or or whatever, but they are following. You know, they have a they have a huge following. And so when I think about that, I think about Christ, you know, I think about our walk with God, our, our fellowship with the Lord. You know, we should be followers of Jesus ourselves to the point that we study him. We learn his ways. In fact, the whole concept of Christianity is to act of acting Christ like. And it's a system of Christ like people, Christ like believers who agree that the, that Jesus is Lord and that this is something that we should do. And so Paul is giving instructions for ministry. And uh, verse 11 in verse in chapter four says, command and teach these things. Don't let anyone despise your young, your youth, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith and in purity. So he's giving him a litany of things. Don't just master one, master them all. And sometimes as believers, we have a tendency to want to hurry up and get it done so we can go on about our business and do what we want to do. I, I know people may not like that, but it's the truth. Some of us want to just go to church on Sunday, get it in out the way. So we say we went, you know, most people who will come to church on Sunday won't show up at Bible study. They won't show up at a church function unless you have food. They won't they won't volunteer their time as an act of service to the Lord. Right. And so when we look at this, we have to be mindful that when the world see us and how we carry ourselves, that leaves an imprint, that leaves an impression, right? And, and I think someone said before that you only get one chance to make a first impression, right? And, and sometimes people will base their whole understanding of who you are based off of how they've seen you, how they witness you, how they've experienced you. And of course, we know this to be true, that People will hear what you say, but they'll remember how you made them feel. They'll remember how you treated them, right? They'll remember certain things about you. And so that's why we want to let our lives be the lives that reflects the image of Christ. We want to our lives to be like a mirror so that people can see Christ in us. You know, when we hear the scriptures that says, great is he that's in us than he that's in the world, we are mindful that we carry the burden of of integrity. We carry this burden that Paul is sharing with Timothy. We're sharing that burden of carrying ourselves and uh, being an example, being an, an example of believers in our speech, the way we talk. We're being challenged with that burden of talking right, behaving correctly, loving correctly, right? And to, to walk in faith despite what it is we are experiencing or witnessing. To believe God. And so our answers can't always be the same as the rest of the world. When we see the world falling apart, we can't get on board with them and, and jump on the bandwagon and say, yep, yeah, that's right. Uh, we have to sometimes say, you know, put a conjecture in there and say, no, but God, you know, but God. And when we throw that in there. That changes everything. You know, we know what the world say, but what does God say? And so as believers, there is a certain write this word down, standard that we should carry. We must hold up a standard, right? The old folks would say, hold up a bloodstained banner, right? That song, we are marching in the army. We have to fight, although we have to cry. We have to hold up the bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. That's a song, but it's the truth. And we understand that Jesus himself uh, never misrepresented who he was and who we were going to be. Uh, he never represented the cost, the price of following Jesus. I mean, following him, he never misrepresented his product. And as Christians, I wonder, do we sometimes misrepresent the kingdom? Do we misrepresent the product of Christianity? Do we sometimes misrepresent the product of holiness, right? Why is it people think when they hear the word holiness that we're talking why do they think self-righteousness instead of holiness? Because there is a difference, right? What's the difference between holiness and self-righteousness? Anybody want to come off and, and give me a quick example of what you think the difference is between self-righteousness and holiness? Holiness is from God. Holiness is from God. Mm -hmm. um, 
controls this is uh, from God. And like you say, self-righteousness is, um, it's all about yourself when you are talking about uh, self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. But holiness is really something that comes from God only. only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about it. I like that. I like that. Anybody else? I was going to suggest that possibly self-righteousness would be when you remove yourself from the holiness. Like when you start to exempt yourself from what's right. Mm. Okay. Mm. As a point. Go ahead, Brother Brian. Okay. I want to say uh, self-righteousness. Uh, well, you should be righteous. But so that's if you're righteous, right? But mm -hmm. uh, nobody can be holier than God. God is holy. You can be holy, but 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 God is the most. God is is, is holy, ho more holy than anybody. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you for that. Anybody else? So it's self righteous. Self righteous. When it's all about I, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. not anybody else. Help. It's all about I. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm self righteous, you know, and 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 the term "if I were you." Mm. Those are the things that they use, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's and uh, it, it, it's all about you. It's not about what the words say or, or whatever. It's, it's just about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. And, and you know, the thing is, when it comes to holiness, everybody, holiness is what God wanted for us. Y'all, mm -hmm. now, holiness. God wanted holiness for us, not from us. Okay. You hear what I'm saying? So. <laughs> He doesn't, God wants holiness for you, not from you. Okay. Right? So he says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Okay. So he wants holiness for us, not from us. Right? And sometimes people make the mistake of thinking that God wants holiness from us. Because, again... Mm -hmm. Nobody's holy but God, but we are to strive. We are to seek holiness. That's why we are to ask for his forgiveness as soon as we mess up. That's why we're supposed to not let the sun go down on our wrath. That's why we're supposed to repent. That's why we're supposed to ask for forgiveness. See, all these things make us holy. And it also makes us righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, remember, before Jesus came, the Bible says that he counted Abraham's faith in him as righteousness because Abraham believed, Abraham trusted, Abraham trusted God so much that he was willing to sacrifice his own son. And, and, and he was willing to do this, knowing good and well his wife was going to have a problem. Uh, he was going to have to answer for that. You know, after all those years of waiting for a child and you're going to go out and take him in the woods on a mountain somewhere and, and, and sacrifice, that would have been a huge problem. But God, I said, but God had a ram in the bush, literally, and mm -hmm. he had a way of escape for him. And so holiness, Jesus says in the word of God, he says, for those, he says, when you say you love me, those who love me, what? Obey my commandments. Mm -hmm. And so conditional, that means that in order for you to, to truly walk with God, it's going to cost you something. It's a real price. And so it's just like in everyday life, guys. If we were to do business with anybody, right, in regular business, anybody who does business with you wants the truth. They want, they want you to do the truth. them on the level. I don't like doing business with somebody crooked. I don't hey, man, like, do? like doing business with somebody. Hey, want, a good, mm -hmm. want a good job. And I want, I want them to do a good job, and I want to do a good That's job, right? right? And, and so people typically, un, they, they fear this untruth or this misrepresentation uh, that can happen when it comes to dealing with people. And that's why as believers, we should be set apart. We should be sanctified. We should be set apart and tell the truth, even if it hurts. You know, you have to be honest with, with how you deal with people. And sometimes people think you're being dumb because they say, man, I wouldn't have admitted that or I wouldn't have said that. I would have mm -hmm. I would have done it this way, as you said earlier, Deacon Lily. You know, you know, if mm -hmm. I were you, I would have done so and so and so, you know, 
-hmm. but that's not mm -hmm. holy. No. That's just that's misrepresenting. And see, if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, you're, right. you're right. You know, if you let your yay be yay and your nay be nay, you see. And so, as mm -hmm. godly people, we're held. We are held to a different standard. There go that word. <laughs> we're held to a different standard. And again, you truly want your life to be a mirror that reflects the image of Christ. You want your life to look like Christ. You want it to feel like Christ. You want it to sound like Christ. And this is why Paul is telling Timothy, look, young man, you got a whole lot of living to do. You ain't even went through half the stuff I've been through. But if you want to, if you want to, if you want to see God do something, you need to trust me on this. You need to trust me at this advice I'm giving you that you need to walk in the full admonition of the Lord and carry yourself accordingly. And I think today, as believers, we need to be reminded that there is a standard of righteousness. There's a standard of holiness. And holiness means come out from amongst them and be separated. That means there are certain things, as we said on Sunday, you got to make sure you're watching the company you keep. You got to be mm -hmm. careful of the places you go. You got to be careful what you let into your eye gate, into your mind gate. You got to be careful what you let in your ear gate, what you hear, right? And you have to just be careful. And not saying you're not going to hear these things, see these things, or think these things. But you got to be careful not to let them take root and you got to try. You got to strive for for to 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 stay holy. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that the Holy Spirit will not always strive to be with us. But, you know, that but we would have to strive to remain with the Holy Spirit. And that was in the early books of Genesis. Right. And so this is why we must make sure that we're doing what we can to make sure that we're paying attention to our lives as we live them. Unfortunately, many of us live our lives not paying attention, right? We're just having a good time. You know, I went to church on Sunday. I'm gonna go have some fun. And I'll be back on church next week. You know, it's almost like Fat Tuesday just before Mardi Gras, right? You know, you go and sin all you want and then you show up at church to ask God for Ash Wednesday for forgiveness, right? You know, and, and some people live their lives like that. And to me, that's dangerous. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's dangerous because the Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy. Mm -hmm. It didn't say just be mm -hmm. ye holy on Sunday. It didn't say just be ye holy on Bible study night. It just said be holy, period. Right. And mm -hmm. so we're going to be a holy people, a godly people. We need to practice this every single day. We need to wake yes. up. Lord, I thank you for this day. I bless your name. I give you the glory. You know, Lord, help me to make it through this day. And guess what? If you yes. don't make it through the day on, on a good day and you had a rough day, you may say, Lord, I sure tried today, but I didn't make it. Please help me tomorrow. You know, if it's mm -hmm. your will, let me see tomorrow. Let me try harder. This is where we hear that song. We're climbing Jacob's ladder every day, right? You're climbing that ladder. It's like when you step up on one of those rungs on that ladder, that means you're higher than the, the last rung you stepped on, right? So that means if you look at that yeah. ladder underneath that last step, if you was a liar and all of a sudden now you've overcome lying, you're not on that rung anymore. You, they can't judge you. The, the world can't judge you on being a liar because that's who you used to be. That's not who you are now. You're holy in that area. Amen, somebody? You're holy in that area. Will you tell a lie? Maybe it might come out of you. You know, the Bible says within us dwells no good thing. Uh oh, what? Yeah, it does say that. The Bible says mm -hmm. in us dwelleth no good thing, right? But it's important that we be mindful that we strive to put those things out because the word says that the Holy Spirit would not dwell in an unclean temple. So that means that we got to strive to keep our temple clean. We must strive to mm -hmm. keep good company. In fact, guess what? First Corinthians 15 and 33 highlights what we talked about on last Sunday. It says here, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. That means you got to be careful of the people you are around. Bad company will ruin your good morals. You can have all the good morals and good intentions. You can be raised right. 
You could have good parents who done taught you the right way and the right way to go and get around the wrong people and they'll basically, they'll ruin it. They will literally tell you, oh, you being a chicken or you being you being all, all sedated. You think you better than everybody. And all of a sudden now you are backtracking, trying to fit in, don't want to miss out. You want to be accepted by your group. And they will literally ruin all of the good morals you had. And our young people going off to college will see this. And I can tell you, it can be a huge problem. Sister Juanita McClendon, please. And Pastor, isn't it true as well as first you have to be able to understand and know the spirit? Because mm -hmm. once you keep doing things bad, each time that spirit is going to quench you. And then mm -hmm. once you start, once you know the spirit and you learn that spirit and you feel bad about doing things wrong and then it gets better. So the next time it's going to hit you a little harder each time. Mm -hmm. and, and the quenching of the spirit is when you are trying to ignore what the Holy Ghost is trying to tell you. That's the quenching mm -hmm. of the spirit. The spirit might be unctioning you and telling you no, telling you to do something totally different. That's the unctioning of the Holy Ghost. Everybody write that down. The unctioning mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost. The unctioning mm -hmm. is that voice that is speaking to your soul that's making you, it's giving you goosebumps and chills and you're like, woo, I don't feel right about this. Feel like you walked over a cold grave almost. You, that's the unctioning mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost. You see, mm -hmm. that's the unctioning. And when you start ignoring it, that's the quenching of the Holy Spirit. You're trying to put that fire, that feeling out. You're trying to suppress it. So that's the quenching of the spirit. When you're quenching the spirit, that's a problem. Hey, Pastor, can you... Um, that's a problem. Go ahead. Can you define what a reprobate mind is, please? Sure. So a reprobate mind is mm -hmm. one where you don't care anymore about what God says, what, um, what sins and actions you're doing, where you don't care. You just want to have a good time. And God allows you to hit this state or to live or to exist in this state of just free fall, uh, carelessness. You don't care. You don't care. You don't believe in hell. You don't believe in heaven. You just don't care. You just want to enjoy your life and, and have a good time. Um, and a reprobate mind is a state of there's an actual definition for it. Somebody can look that up. But when you reach that place of reprobation, man, where you just. You know, you don't care. It's a you're lost, and, and God. That's a state where God just allows you to be, where where grace ain't even trying to touch you. That's a place you don't want to be. It's almost like God letting you go. That's the best way I can describe it. Now there are a lot of theological conversations around that, where God gives you over to a reprobate mind, where He allows you to just live in your place. But this is the cool thing about grace. Grace exists even still in that state. But when God turns you over to that, whatever happens in your life, it's just going to happen. And you'd be like, God, why would you let that happen? Well, it wasn't God that let it happen. He turned you over to that. You were the one who just continue, continued to resist him to the point that you felt like you didn't need him. Right. And check this out, guys. If you go with me to Matthew chapter five, Matthew chapter five. Verse 13 through 16, you can write that down or you can go with me. It says. Uh, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16, it says, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, or as we say in the country, the bushel, but on a stand, and, and, if, and, and it gives light, to all in the house in the same way, let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good works and glo give glory to your father who is in heaven. You see, so our light, our personality, our character, our integrity is on full display before the world. Again, you are an influencer. Either you're going to draw people or they're going to draw you. Hello, somebody. You're going to either draw them or they're going to draw you. The question is, who's going to take the lead? Who's drawing who? I don't want people to draw me. 
into their mess. I don't want people to draw me into the drama. I don't want people to draw me into their sin, right? And that's what the devil does. He tries to pull us in with temptation. The Bible says, blessed is the man who overcomes temptation for his is the kingdom of heaven, right? So we must be mindful that we are to resist the devil and he will flee. And it's hard sometimes. It is hard to resist sin. It's hard to resist fun because I know sin can be fun. I'm not going to lie and say it's not. Sin can be fun, but it's dangerous. Sin will take you as far as you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay. That's what sin will do for you. And so people who enjoy sin, they're really messing around with, with, with something very dangerous because if you get caught, if you get cut off in your sin, you're lost. Amen. And that's why we talk about the grace of God. We sung um uh what song was that we sung um at the cross on sunday and the man who wrote that song uh oh my gosh i had his name in my mind i think his last name is wells i believe but the gentleman who wrote that song was a was a slave owner a, a very brutal one terrible terrible man and uh he met the lord one day and the lord saved him and he wrote that song as a result of that. So when he talks about himself being a worm, that's what he was calling himself. Even at this day and time, I still don't say that part. I usually say as as one such as I, instead of saying a worm. <laughs> Y'all might catch me one Sunday singing that if we ever seen that. I'd probably say one instead of worm. But that was his testimony because he was such a terrible, terrible man. And that song, if you listen to every line, every lyric of that song, it is very convicting and very powerful and evident that God literally changed this man's life at the cross where he first saw the light and the burdens of his heart was rolled away. It was there by faith. He received his sight and now he's happy all the day. Man, y'all can't understand when God has really changed your life, you begin to look different. You're talking about an influence. This man has influenced the, the hymn society and, and the churches forever. We're still singing this man's testimony. Think about that for a second. We're singing his testimony. And why do we relate to his testimony? Because his testimony is very similar to our testimony, how God saved us, how we had our own Damascus experience where we met Jesus at the cross where he changed our lives and the burdens of our hearts were rolled away just as well, right? You know, and so when we sing that song, we're not necessarily trying to sing his testimony. We're singing ours, but we're mindful that this song was birthed out of a bad place, but not out of a bad place. It was bad. It was birthed from a from a conviction at a crossroad where God changed his life, and the 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 conviction and the and the the salvation that this man experienced produced this song of praise. Think about that. It produced a song of praise for him. And that song has lasted for generations now, generations. And we're still singing at the cross. Hallelujah. We're still singing at the cross. I feel like singing it right now. We're still singing it. Right. And so this is why Jesus understood it was important. That, number one, we don't misrepresent the product of Christianity, of a holy life. And this is why we have to not look for for people's problems and weaknesses. You know, my dad used to say all the time, you, if you go digging for a booger, you're going to find one. Right. You, you can't go looking for problems all the time. Stop looking for people to be a mess. Stop looking for people to be perfect. That is not what holiness is. That is not what holiness is. Stop waiting. You know, well, see, mm -hmm, I thought you changed. You you, you act just like I knew you would. And you, and you call yourself holy. You know, church, you know, people always want to talk about church people anyway. Yes, they think, right. think we all this. They think we're trying to be better. Listen, let me tell you something. That building that all those church, all them church people go to, that's the perfect place for you to come. If you don't, if you don't know Jesus and you're talking about that right. church full of hypocrites, guess what? You're going to fit right in that whole building. Amen. Is a church Amen. full of hypocrites. You know, it, 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 if you say that church is full of hypocrites, guess what? You'll fit just right, too, because you're a hypocrite yourself. That's where the hypocrites <laughs> grow. We go to church. So God can right. fix us and we get better mm -hmm. a little bit at a time. Every Sunday we go to church, we're getting stronger and stronger. How many of y'all 
just if you would just raise your hand, wave at me real quick, give me a flash or a thumbs up or a happy face. How many of you all feel like every time you go to church, you get stronger, you get better. You just come on now. See, you you just feel it every time you go to church, you get a little bit more. Every time you go to Bible study, every time you get on the prayer line, every time you get together at a fellowship functioning, you just feel closer to the Lord. That's the way it's supposed mm -hmm. to be. We can't handle holding this all at one time. That's why the Holy Ghost, when it says on the day of Pentecost, when it came in, it came in like fire, like a mighty rushing wind. It just came in like the men had like cloven tongues to the point that they were speaking in another language. You understand what I'm saying? How many of y'all ever wanted to speak another language? I would love to speak Yoruba, French. I would love mm -hmm. to speak you know, a little bit of German maybe, you know? I want to learn some other languages, but they were speaking in the Holy Ghost to the point that they were speaking fluently in a totally different language. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will take you and all your vulnerability, all your weaknesses, and make you sound like a scholar. Mm -hmm. He will make you sound like you've been to the greatest universities in the world. You know, somebody asked the question, how do these fishermen, how are they pre preaching the gospel like this? They, these are unlearned men. How are they able mm -hmm. to preach and teach and talk so fluently, incite and recite facts and history? And they ain't been to nobody's synagogue. They've been to no one's seminary. They've been to nobody's school. Right. They fish it, right? right? Mm -hmm. God will take the foolish things to confound the wise, as the Bible says. Oh, God. He will oh, take God. things that ain't supposed to work and make it work. The Bible mm -hmm. said that one day David was running from was running from from Saul, and he had David to hide in a cave, and he spoke to a spider, and had that spider to weave over the door of that cave. And the Bible said that when the men came looking for David, they saw that the spider's web hadn't been broken. They didn't even bother to go in, and David was inside. You see. Mm -hmm. God will use the very smallest things to have his way. He spoke to a donkey and made the donkey talk to Balaam. Mm -hmm. Balaam was beating the donkey almost to death. And the donkey saw the death angel standing in the way, ready to take Balaam out because Balaam had messed up with God. And the donkey refused to move. And Balaam said, oh, if I could, if I had a sport, I'd kill you right here. And the donkey spoke to him and said, why would you, why are you beating me like this? Have I not been faithful to you? Have I not carried your stuff? Right? <laughs> now, look, I don't know about y'all. <laughs> donkey started talking to me. That's a problem. <laughs> I had to go. Had yes, to go. sir. You see? <laughs> and, and so, you know, I, I preached a sermon once. It was titled, Never Argue With a You Know What. And I was talking about that, that donkey, you know. Uh, and you know what they call a donkey in the Bible. And so, you know, you have to be careful not to even let people pull you into stuff. You have to be careful Amen. to be in a spirit of discernment to the point that you know that God is resisting your wishes. He is resisting your efforts. He's resisting you. And mm -hmm. some people get all mad. Why is all this bad luck happening to me? Listen, God is trying to save your life, you idiot. <laughs> He's trying to help you. Yes. And you just as mad and just as frustrated. Lord, all this stuff is going wrong. I'm just so frustrated. I don't know what to do. It's like everything is working against me. Trust me, he's working it out for your good. He got you frustrated because he's saving your life. How many of y'all ever uh, tried to get somewhere, <clears throat> trying to get out the house, trying to go, and everything is going wrong? Go out, the car is messing up, car won't start, forgot your keys, can't find the keys, you know, you got something in the house, you got to get out go, and get, go get it. You finally search and you get ready to go. Dog, I forgot that other thing too. You got to go back and get it. And no sooner you right. get to the road, you see this big old car wreck knowing good and well, had you left on time, that might have been you. Yeah. All right. All right. You can't tell you how many Amen. things happened to me. Right. I had it one happen to me um, probably this time last year. Uh, was trying to get to work and I couldn't get out the house. I was supposed to have been leaving at 6 a.m. to get to work. And I'm struggling like crazy. And no sooner than I finally get down the road, one of the biggest accidents and one of the strangest places that you never would have thought would have been an accident on a little country road, six car pileup. 
I definitely would have mm-hmm. been call up had I left on time. You see, mm. so I'm saying to you that the Bible lets us know that even God is watching over us. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, is guiding us and leading us into perfect truth. And we have to be mindful that we as influencers have an impact on each other. How do you know that, Pastor? If you go to Proverbs 27 and 17, the Bible talks about iron sharpening iron, right? If iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another, that means that I, I'm influenced, I'm inspired by your walk with God. You ought to be inspired by my walk with God. Hello, somebody. I'm inspired right. by the testimonies and the lives of our members at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. I mm-hmm. am inspired. You may not think so, but I am. I'm inspired to see married couples who have hung in there all these years. I'm inspired to see mothers there with their with their with their uh children i'm inspired to see grandmothers there with their grandchildren i'm inspired to see grandfathers showing up at church i'm inspired to see men who are struggling with different things in their lives yet coming with their wives and children i'm inspired by that y'all i really am i'm inspired by pleasant grove how you guys care about this church how you care about the work, how you care about ministry, how you care about representation for your church. I'm inspired by that. You know, I'm very inspired. And and, and I hope that you all are inspired by my walk, uh, by my conviction, by my lifestyle. And, you know, and that's important that we live that life of holiness in such a way that people don't think that you're trying to be sedated. They just see that you're trying to do your best to walk with God. Amen. Right. That's all I'm trying to do. I may not get it right 100 percent of the time. And see, you really want to know how somebody live. Follow them home. You'll definitely find out. You know? Amen. Amen. Follow them home. And look, call them at call them, call them after 10 o'clock, and you get a you get a real picture of them. Call them some early on a Saturday morning and see how they answer that phone. You see, you know, and we have to be mindful that we have to be instant in season and out of season when when Paul to Timothy about preaching the word of God, he was saying, be ready in season and out of season. Don't just be ready when it's in season. Don't be ready when somebody handed you the mic. Don't be ready only when the spotlight is on you. Be ready at all times. You know? Okay. Notice how when we get on Bible study, I typically ask somebody to open up with prayer. And I just love how you guys just volunteer to do it, even though you may not know who I'm going to call. And it's not a game. I'm just teaching you how to be prepared it, it, listen, as your pastor, it's my job to prepare you to live without me. All right. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Right. It's my job to teach you how to pray without me. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. It's my job to teach you how to handle things outside of my presence. Because when, when I'm not with you, if something's going on, I need you to have enough training to know this is the time we pray. This is the time we seek God. This is a time that Amen. we begin to go before the Lord in the, in the spirit. This is when we begin to fast. You don't have to have an order from the pastor to start, to start fasting loose here. No, you don't. Amen. No. If the spirit leads you to fast, baby, you better fast. Amen. And you have to learn to listen to the spirit. Don't just follow orders. You see, a lot of bad things have happened because people are following orders. But how about following leadership is different, right? Follow leadership, right? Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ, right? So we're Christ, supposed amen. to follow leadership while at the same time, you're supposed to follow the unctioning of the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, he can speak to you just like he can speak to me. Amen. And guess what? God is still not the author of confusion. So if if the Holy Ghost in you is saying something and the Holy Ghost in me don't hear that, you know what I'm saying? Then that means there's something off. It means that maybe maybe we haven't communicated together because when God is doing something, the Spirit will send affirmation. It will send someone to agree. That's why the church says amen, because when we know what God is doing, when God is speaking, he will always prepare a witness for himself for his word. 
You see, yes, you will. He won't, there won't be no confusion there when it's the Holy Ghost. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. So, so Amen. If the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, then you got to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost because, see, sometimes the Holy Ghost that's speaking to you may be telling the other person, when you see this sign, then this is when you move. You see, and so if you mm -hmm. don't, you might be hindering somebody else from moving. Well, yeah. think about that. If you're not moving under the, under, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, maybe you're holding up somebody else. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. That's why you mm -hmm. must follow the leading. I said the leading of the Holy Ghost. All right. Yes. For the Holy Ghost will lead you into all truth. Okay. Right. He is a um, light unto your path and a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. He will guide you and direct you and order you and show you everything you need to know. But you got to trust the Holy Ghost. But you got to know the Holy Ghost, too. You see, so this is why, as believers, our influence must be directed by the Holy Ghost. We must be mindful. Mm -hmm. We are a light that sitteth up on a hill. And, and, and listen, uh, you don't want at the end of this thing. Uh, uh, where he says, where he says, you ran well, but who did hinder you? In Galatians 5 and 7, it says this, you were running well, but who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little leaven levels a whole lump. And that's why as believers, as influencers, we can't allow to wor the world to influence us, not even a little bit. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. What happens when you put uh, yeast and leaven inside the bread? It makes the whole thing rise up, don't it? I don't care how much it is. Even just a little bit will make it all rise up. You see what I'm saying? And so this is why it's important that we have a what? Standard. This is why we must be holy people on purpose. Don't be ashamed, you know. God said, Jesus says, if you're ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. So you can't be ashamed to be called a Holy Ghost filled, you know, and guess what? Holiness don't just belong to the Pentecostals. Holiness is what the what the Lord gives to the world. Hey, and if you're hey, not hey, holy, you're not going to see him. That's right. You're holy. That's right. You got to be holy. You got to be holy. You have to have a standard. And you can't just be wishy washy. You can't be unstable. Amen. You know, you can't be one minute on this side and the straddling the fence. You got to choose you this Amen. day who you're going to serve, right? Brother Westbrook, I saw your hand up. Uh, you hear me? I can hear yeah. you now. Right. Yeah, I had a question when we, when, you, when we first came on, uh, mm -hmm. First Timothy chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Chapter first Timothy chapter four verse twelve. We said, "What what was that about again?" You say something about Paul. Paul was saying that uh, he was telling them to don't let anyone despise your youth, but set an example uh, for you know how you carry yourself. And he was just telling telling this young man how to carry himself in speech, in behavior, in conduct, and in love, and in faith, and in purity. You know, he was trying to tell him to carry yourself like a believer. These are some of the attributes. That a Christian should have. This is your. This should be your default as a Christian, as a believer. This should be just some of the basic tenets of your behavior and your attitude. You should. You should talk like a believer. You should behave like a believer. You should love each other like a believer. You should have faith like a believer, and you should live a pure life like a believer. Okay. Mm hmm. So, so, so if you look at this in first Peter, go, write this down first Peter. I can look at this if you don't have it already. First Peter chapter two, verse 12 says this. He says, keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable. Now, Peter is talking to the, 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 the other church members that he's developing. Remember in the book of Acts, he's, he's, he's establishing the church. Uh, that 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 Jesus put him in charge of, and he's establishing this church. And believe it or not, people say, "Well, I'm not I'm not with organized religion. I'm I'm spiritual." Listen, it's important that you forsake not to assemble yourself. You know, as others have, you have to be amongst other believers. That building is just a space where we all come and train and fellowship and gather and worship. But he's telling them how to carry themselves. Why? Because if one person is misrepresenting Christians, how many people will go on social media right now and look at one crooked preacher or one crooked believer 
and say, see, that's why I don't go to church. That's why I don't do church. That's why I don't go to, I don't, I don't, that's why I don't do organized religion. You see what I'm saying? One person can misrepresent the whole product of the kingdom. And we're kingdom citizens. And if we're kingdom citizens, then we ought to act like it. And that means that we should know each other when we see each other. When I say hallelujah, somebody ought to say praise the Lord somewhere else. That lets me know that you, you, you my, you're part of my tribe, right? We, we're part of the same fellowship. We serve, there's one God, one master, right? You know, Jesus says, other sheep I have, which are the, uh, not of this fold, them also I must bring and There will be one fold and one shepherd. That means that if, no matter what denomination you are, if Jesus is your shepherd, he's mine too. Amen, somebody, <laughs> you know. And so he says here in First Peter 3 and 15, he says, but he says, but it, he's no First Peter 2 and 12. He says, keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable. Now he's talking to the Jewish people. When you go out of people outside of the church, people who are not a part of, of this whole thing. And at that time, it was the Gentiles. The Gentiles weren't a part of this thing yet. And, and Peter was telling him, said, you keep your conduct honorable. They already don't think some, they don't think much about you. And believe it or not, church folks, the world don't think much about you either. Right? Yeah, they, really yeah, don't. Yeah. they have no yeah. respect for the church, no regard for mm -hmm. holiness. No regard for sanctification. Mm. And some people, when they Amen. get into a state of reprobated mind, they don't care at all. They will walk into a church, cuss it out. Some people walk into a church with guns. They don't care. They're very irreverent right. in the last days that we're living in. And people are in this way. But Peter is telling him, you got to make sure you conduct, you know, conduct yourself in such a way, even amongst Gentile, that is honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, uh oh, here it is. When they begin to speak of you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. They're going to have to say, you know what? Mm -mm. As much as we try to destroy them, these people have done nothing to us. They begin to witness and say, these people, these are fine folks. These are good people. These are, these are, these are some good folks, you see. And that's when God is bringing down justice, when God is bringing down judgment, when something is starting to happen, you're going to have your enemies speaking on your behalf. You see, sometimes people worry about being caught up in the whole group of things when God's justice come in. See, one thing about God, when God starts bringing in punishment, he's going to set the righteous to the to one side and the, and, the, and the evildoers on the other side. He's going to separate the wheat from the tares. He's going to separate the goats from the sheep. You see what I'm saying? There's going to be a great separation. And people sometimes get all caught up and worried that they're going to get caught up in this thing. Listen, that's why you got to live holy. You got to figure out what side you're going to be on. If you know what side you're on, right. when God comes to do the separating, you ain't got to panic because you know what side he's going to put you on. You see that you have control over. You have the power of choice that you have the power to respond to grace. You have the power to receive salvation, to speak, uh, to, to, to confess your, your, your sins and, and to believe that God has saved you and to walk and live a holy life every single day. That's a choice. That is a choice. And so you can do that. And so this is why this is why we have to be mindful that as salt of the earth, that we must keep our savor. We must keep our flavor, our taste. You know, I used to laugh all the time. People say, how you doing? They say, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. And I used to sometimes say, oh, highly flavored, you know, uh, and, but I kind of thought that was clever in a way because we're supposed to be flavorful we're supposed to make a difference you know y'all ever ate some food that needed just a little salt don't taste good you put a little salt in it, it makes it taste just fine you can go on and finish that plate right <laughs> if you just add just a little bit if you put too much you don't even want it right it ain't good for you but you need just enough and that's the way we are the bible says that we are the salt of the earth and so it is important that we carry ourselves and be mindful that we are influencers as believers, you are your children are watching you, your wife is watching you, your husband is watching you, your neighbor's watching you. You don't know who's watching you. Some people see you suffering and you be wondering, Lord, why am I going through all this? Because God's got somebody watching you. Stop complaining. You know, stop complaining. He's trying to get you through. He's going to, when he blesses you, it's going to bless several people who saw you go through. And believe it or not, you got some haters out here who don't want to see you overcome stuff. You got some haters who want to see you succumb to your problem. They want to see you overtaken and overshadowed by 
all the things that's wearing you down. And some people don't even think about you. You think they worried about you. Y'all need to understand. Take your burdens to the Lord. <laughs> take them to him. Don't worry about everybody else. And so this is where, as influencers, we are following Christ. We're following Jesus, right? And, and this is important that you are mindful as an influencer that that um, that that in the last days, you're going to have all these things going on. In fact, if you go to chapter four, uh, in chapter four in, in First Timothy, where we started, it says, now the spirit explicitly says that in the latter time, some will depart from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons through the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared. They forbid marriage and demand abstinence from foods that God created to be received with gratitude by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving since it is sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. So again, this is in the Old Testament, I mean the New Testament where he's just kind of letting people know that there are demonic influences and we need to be mindful of that while being kingdom influencers. Amen. So we are living in a day and time right now where the demons are on full display. You see them on the award ceremony. You see them wearing their little red outfits and people trying to get it into the schools now where they just they are unapologetically unapologetically uh, uh, followers of, of Satan at this point. And they don't care. And they're very brazen and bold. And they want to take away the church's voice to speak out and make sure that they get front and center stage. You see, the Bible said that this was happening in the last days. And I do believe we're living in the last days. Anybody believe that? I believe we are. And right now, the devil is very bold. He don't care. And keep in mind, his whole purpose is to take you to hell with him. And hell was made for him and his angels. And so he wants to take as many folks down with him as possible. And be careful of anybody who wants to take you down. And somebody says, if I can't make it, you ain't either. Be careful of those type of people. Those are dangerous folks. People who are willing to destroy everything and everybody if they can't win, right? And so that's why you have to be mindful of who you are. You have to be mindful of the instruction that the Lord has given you on this path of life. Amen. And be careful not to reject uh, and those reproofs that the Lord has given you. When the Lord is telling you something and you get upset because he's straightening you out, don't get out. Don't get out. of. Don't get bit out of shape. He's loving you. Sometimes reproof as a parent, I had to learn this the hard way. When my parents would say, I'm doing it because I love you and it hurts me more than it hurts you. I didn't understand that until I had my own kids. I didn't get that. I thought that was the dumbest thing anybody in the world could say to me. What do you mean it's hurting you worse than it hurting me? Don't you, you ain't feeling what I'm feeling right now. This hurts, you know? And I had to spank my own children and that bothered me. I couldn't sleep. I, you know, that hurt my feelings watching my kids cry because I had to spank them, you know? And, and I finally understood. It did hurt me a little bit more than it hurt them. And they don't they don't realize it, but it hurt me, <laughs> you know. But God, He chasing those whom He loves, and that's why we have to be mindful that when we're going through stuff, and God is sending people at you, challenging you about your behavior and how you carry yourself. That's because He's loving you. Now, a parent who don't go after their child and don't raise them and don't and just let them get away with everything, to me, that's abuse. That ain't love, you know. If you see me going wrong and you're not telling me, you're not really a friend to me. You're not a friend. So I love you enough to tell you the truth. And, and write this down, guys. I've, I've said this before, too, that Jesus loves you just the way you are. And I want you all to share this because my pastor, Pastor Oliver J. Haney, shared this with us. And he would say this almost every Sunday. Uh, he was a good leader, great pastor. He passed away probably like two years ago. Wonderful man. I used to go visit him in the nursing home a lot, him and his wife. And uh, But he would always say, the Lord loves you just the way you are but he loves you too much to leave you the way you are. He loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you the way you are. We all need to be changed in some way. So I hope that this lesson has been a blessing to you. I want you all to come off mute real quick. Talk to me. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear from you. How is this, how is this word tonight minister to you? What is your takeaway? I want to hear from you all. We This is our our um, Q&A and, and time to respond and reflect at this time. Would y'all come off if you want to say anything? You're welcome to. Yeah, uh, 
it helped me be a better influencer. It helped me be a better influencer. Amen. For the impact, for the impact as as believers and stuff that you were saying, the message that you was giving. Amen. Good. And yeah. it, it, you know, it gave, it gave me something to take heed to. Let me know something that I didn't know about. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I didn't, if I heard it before, maybe if in a different preaching, but uh, mm-hmm. I like it. Amen. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Anybody else? Thank you very much for being on. Glad you on tonight. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, well, um, it just made me look at the way I'm looked at towards others, the way I present myself towards others. Mm-hmm. It gives me a perspective of how I'm really showing myself because I do have, you know, other people looking at me mm-hmm. as far as nieces, nephews, families. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it just kind of changed my yeah. perspective of how I want people to look at me and see me. That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear you say that, Kayana, because, you know, that that matters. You, God has given you, um, uh, it's like he puts us on a shelf of display for the world to see us. And he gives us platforms where people can really watch us. And and you don't want to be responsible for people saying, well, shoot, man, no point in me trying to give, live my life for the Lord. She ain't trying to do it. I don't know why some people attach to us and associate with us, but that's why God blesses us such a way that, you know, you know, I think we still look at Job as one of the greatest influencers when it comes to going through tr- uh, trials and struggles. You know, I mean, come on, that man did it, boy. And we still praise God for what he went through and how he overcome, you know, and we have our testimony. If God was to turn us into a, a Bible story, what would our Bible chapter be? What what book would we be if our lives were an actual, an actual book of the Bible? What would our story read? I mean, y'all ever think about that? What would our story read, you know? So that's a great, great response. Absolutely. Wonderful. And the Bible tells us in Romans 12 and 2, it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds. Uh, and and that, that by the testing, you may discern what is the will and perfect will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. So this is why as believers, we have to be mindful that that as we are living this life, we're supposed to be set apart in such a way that our mind just changes and we're thinking differently. We have a different, we have a different set of rules and regulations that 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 we live by versus the world who just say if it feels good, do it. You know, no, we we can't do that. We gotta say no to a whole lot of things. And it hurts sometimes, but I tell you what, if we if we give these things up, well, we got a lot more coming to us on the other side of this of this thing called life, don't we? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, guys, I'm not going to go on the time. I, I definitely want to give everyone a chance to say something. I've enjoyed talking with you. Anyone else want to say anything before I stop? Brother Henry? Anybody? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I can say uh, for myself, um, surrounding myself with um, other people's Mm-hmm. That's that's that I feel that's living right and speaking right and not just on a chain every we lost you. We gotta repeat that one more time. All right, we lost her. I'm sorry, we lost your audio. All right. Can you? Yeah, I can hear something. Keep talking. Okay. I was saying um, there are people that have been in my life that I wasn't too sure about. Mm -hmm. But when I realized that those people was teaching me and I was actually following them Mm -hmm. and I had to find out that I had to follow Christ. Mm-hmm. And it also led me to watch the company that I keep mm-hmm. and the words that utter out of my mouth. And mm-hmm. not only that, where I go, what I'm doing and how I present myself. Mm-hmm. So when I changed my life to begin to really uh, know that God was my all in all, it made a big difference for my life and my family's life. That's wonderful. That's 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 beautiful. Amen. That's a great testimony, yeah. too. I'm glad you got yeah. your experience that. That's wonderful. Anybody else? 
All right. Well, God bless you all. I really enjoyed you all tonight. And, um, you know, keep in mind that we are chosen people. Uh, we are a royal priesthood. Um, we are a holy nation, saints. And uh, don't, 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 don't discount and don't minimize your, your walk with God when it comes to being a holy people. You can make your boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. You know, you have to tell people, I'm a part of the holy nation. You know, I know I'm a part of the United States, the nation of the United States, but I'm a part of the kingdom. I'm a kingdom. Citizen. I am in this world, not of it. Amen. Uh, Amen. I, am, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, the Lord knows exactly well. I'm a living soul. I'm a human being. Amen. That God created. And so, you know, I, I can't. You know, the Bible tells me not to be overtaken, you know, overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So I know my assignment. I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm an influence. I'm supposed to overcome evil, not evil overcoming me. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Bible tells me in Romans 12 and 21, that I'm supposed to overcome these things. And so, you know, we overcome by the blood of the lamb. And so this is why we must know who we are. Study your Bible. It'll tell you exactly who you are. Study your word as often as you can. If you got a Bible app, please download it. Make sure it's a part of your daily uh, life. You know, if you got some memes posted out there. Now, you can't be, you can't sit up here and, and quote scripture and, 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 and holiness stuff and then quote sinful stuff at the same time, guys. You got to set a standard somewhere. You got to decide which one you're going to do. Amen, somebody. You know, and so you have to be careful. You know, you can't cuss one minute and then be singing the praises of God the next. You gotta get a handle on that. That's that's part of sanctifying yourself. And so, as a pastor, I wouldn't be worth my salt, Amen. If I didn't tell you, you gotta set a standard. You gotta be different, Amen. I know sometimes cussing makes it feel good. Sometimes it gets the point across, but that ain't what we're supposed to do, Amen. We gotta talk with love. We gotta, you know, as as Paul says, we gotta speak. In a certain way, we got to we got to carry ourselves in a certain way. And so um, uh, Paul says one more time, he said, don't let anyone despise your youth. And that means even your level in Christ Jesus. You know, if you're still new to this walk with God, hey, you're going to grow. I promise you, you're going to get stronger and stronger every single day. And so you just make sure you, as Paul said to Timothy, you set an example. Hello, somebody. I'm going to set an example today. I, I want the Lord to use me. I want the Lord to help me to set an example for the believers. And I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it so that somebody else will get something out of my life, that someone else will see what I've done. Amen. Uh, uh, yeah. was, was that Mother Barbara, was that you telling me Sunday about uh, about someone had a memorial service and they were just talking about how good their lives were? Was that you telling me about that, Mother Barbara? Um, funeral, you said they didn't have a preaching, they didn't preach a eulogy. Was that was that you who told me that? I don't know who that was. Somebody told me that that they didn't preach a eulogy, they just spoke good words. No, that wasn't me. Okay, I don't know who that was. Somebody told me that he's just talking about a funeral that happened, and they said they didn't even preach a eulogy, they just kind of talked about the life this pastor had lived, and he was blind, and uh, how God had used him all those years. and how he was able to do so much in his life. And uh, they just talk good things about him. And that's what I'm saying. When you left a legacy and you left your witness before people and you lived that life of wholeness, people are going to speak well of you. And that's what you want. Yes. That's where I love that song. May the work I've done speak for me. Let the life I Amen. live, you know, let it speak for me. Amen. And you don't have to, you don't have to brag and boast about your life. Let the people who've seen you live it tell those, tell what you've done. Amen. And, Amen. Uh, and Amen. so that's why we got to walk and let your light shine. So, guys, I love you. I appreciate you so much. Uh, I pray that this lesson inspires you to carry on and to continue to walk with the Lord as boldly and courageously as you can. I'm going to end tonight's prayer uh, tonight, if you would. And then we're going to uh, bless God for uh, next Sunday. We'll see you guys on this upcoming Sunday. You all be sure to invite somebody to come to church with you and those who haven't been in a while. Be sure to uh, reach out to them um, and, and let them know that we, we love them. All right, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for tonight. 
We bless you for this word, for how you continue to, to bless us, oh God. We thank you because you remind us that you are a righteous God, you are a holy God, that you yes. are a holy people. Father, we thank you because we know that we can make a decision, you know, God, we can choose to, to walk with you. And God, uh, we we just we want a closer walk with you, Father. Uh, Father, we want to be able to offer you a life of sacrifice, a life of of, of just uh, service. And Father, we ask that you would again just hold us in the palm of your hand. Father, we ask that you just keep us and remind us that we belong to you. And God, we thank you because you allowed us to have companionship through brotherhood and fellowship and sisterhood. God, that we don't have to do this by ourselves. We're thankful that we can have, uh, that we belong to a big fold where you said that that you are the good shepherd. Uh, you said that other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, that they also you must bring and there will be one fold and one shepherd. And so God, we thank you for the universal church. We thank you for the church that belongs to you, where we serve you as our Lord and King. And Father, we ask that you would again just bless your people everywhere. Bless every ministry. Bless every church that's having Bible study tonight, whether they're in person or online. God, we pray that somebody lives are touched by the word and by the Bible a lesson that they're learning tonight. And Father, we ask that you just cover your people, uh, continue to let them uh, see your glory, let them be a light and let them be a light, live a life of influence in this world. Because right now, God, we need to be at our very best when the world is at its very, very worst. And so God, we ask that you be our shield, our buckler, as we continue to walk in your ways. And Father, we ask that again, that you be glorified in everything we do in the name of the Father, the Son, and the precious Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. We, we love you all. Y'all have a good rest of this week. Y'all share.